times. This is section 4.3, logarithmic functions. Okay. A logarithm function is the inverse function of those exponentials that we just did. So a logarithm is the opposite of the expo exponential function, just like adding and subtracting are opposite, multiplying and dividing are opposite, squaring and square root functions are opposite. Logarithm is the inverse of exponential. One thing you need to remember is that a log is always equal to the x component. Or logarithm, let's just say logarithm is the x component. Logarithm is the x component, or logarithm equals the x component, however you, whatever makes more sense to you, but a logarithm is the x component. So when these are all set up, because of the inverse, what a logarithm always equals is the x component, okay? Your definition for a logarithm is that if you have p, is it, if we have log base b of a is equal to p. This is true if and only if your b to the p power equals a. And this is not the variables your book uses, but I'm going to tell you why I use b, p, and a. And on these, a must be some number greater than zero, b must be greater than zero, and b cannot be equal to one. We're going to talk about why this is. This is going to be real easy, especially if you understood those exponentials, how to solve those equations that we just did. These are going to be super easy because you're going to write the logarithm in exponential form and solve them just like we did all those problems on the board just a minute ago. All right? Everybody ready to listen to what this means? First of all, tell me this. What is this on the exponential function? B would stand for the? The base. The base. P stands for? the exponent or the power, and A would be the answer, right? What you would get? Okay. Base power answer. Well, when you write it in logarithm form, it's the same thing. B is the base of your logarithm. Remember I just told you, a log always is equal to the exponent. A logarithm is an exponent, so it equals the power. And then the answer, which is called the argument of the log, goes right here. And we're going to start out first writing them from logarithm form to exponential form. And it's going to go counterclockwise. We're going to say your base to the p power equals the answer. Base, power, answer. So that we can write it just like what we have over there in exponential form and solve it the way that I've solved all the rest of the problems. Okay? So let's look at doing that first based on um, We'll start writing an exponential function. You want to write, and this would be the log base 2 of 64 equals 6. But this is your logarithm. Now, your calculator has a logarithm button on it, but it's understood to be a log of base 10. So that's not going to help you when we're getting ready to solve these problems because our bases are going to be numbers other than 10. But if your base is never not written, it's kind of like the square root problem where the root's understood to be 2. If you have a log and the base isn't right there, it's understood to be a 10. So on this one, if we want to write this in exponential form, what's the base? 2. And it's always written a little bit below. So it's going to be 2 to what power? 6 equals 64. And what you should, should get, and it'll always be a true statement. We just saw earlier on that other example. 2 to the 6 is 64. Okay? Let's look at another example. Number 2. Let's say if we have um, log base 3 of 9 is equal to 2. And you can do this one. What's my base? Three. Three. What's the power? Two, Two equals nine. nine. Follow what we're doing? All right. And like I said, if you have one that just says um, the log um, of 100 is equal to 2. If the base is not written, your common logarithm base is 
understood to be a 10. So if it's not there, it has a base 10. It's, it's your common long base is 10. So if you just had the word L-O-G, it has a base of 10. Just like the button on your calculator has a base of 10. So the base on this problem is understood to be 10 squared equals 100. Okay? All right. Now, this is going to be the more, most important thing to you is being able to write a logarithm in exponential form because you're going to rewrite it and then you're going to solve these exponential equations like we did in 4.2. But your book also wants to make sure you can do it the other way. If it's given an exponential form, you can write it as a logarithm. Which, the reason you can do it this other direction is mainly it'll help you more, like if you go on to um, take a calculus course, that if you write it exponential, sometimes they're harder to integrate and do these other things with, so they can write them as a log. Um, so let's say you want to write in log form. So number one, if I have 4 squared is equal to 16. You want to write it in log form. So I have log. What's my base? 4. And I always go ahead and put my exponent, what it's equal to, which is 2, and the argument 16. I write it the same way we go around the clockwise when I write mine. 4 squared is 16. Write your base, it equals the power, and then you come back in for the answer, or the argument part. Let's look at another one of those. Let's say if we have number 2, 1 half cube is equal to 1 eighth. My log, what's my base? One half. The power is three, and the answer was one eighth. So we got base, power, answer. Base, power, answer. Let's do one more kind of like this. Let's say if I have one half to the negative three equals eight. First of all, do you agree that's true? If I wanted to make that exponent positive, if I'd flip it, that would make it 2 cubed, which is 8. See what you can do here. Properties. 
Copies of logarithms. Let's say if we have um, the first one, if you have log base b of b. Well, on this one, anytime your base is, your base is the same as your argument, you're asking yourself, b to what power equals b? <coughs> What's the x common understood to be on that one if it's not written there? Yeah. One. So this has to equal one. So look at when you put an exponential form. You've got b to the first power equals b, right? b is equal to b. So anytime your base is the same as your argument, it'll always equal the x common, which of course that x common is understood to be one. Because you're asking yourself, b to what power gives you b? b to the first power is equal to b, right? And it works regardless if you got an x prime. Sometimes you'll see log base b of b to the x. Well, what do I just tell you logarithm always equal? The x prime, right? So it would be equal to x. Basically, because exponent, and the reason this works is because exponentials and logarithms, remember I told you, are inverses. So basically here, these bases are canceling each other out. And you're just getting the x prime. Okay? Kind of like the squaring and square rooting, they end up, they end up each other. That's what's happening here. The base of the logarithm and the base of this exponential function, they cancel each other out. So you just get the x common. Which we said logarithm is always equal to the x common. But this is true for the same reason. B to the x would be equal to B to the x. If you put it in exponential form. Now the one of the ones that we use a whole lot you'll see come up is if you have log base b of 1. Well, no matter what number you have, anything raised to this power always equals 1. You know, you remember what it is? No matter what your base is, if it's raised to this power, it equals 1. Right. So anytime your argument's 1, because this is true because b to the 0 equals 1. So anytime your argument position is a 1, the answer is always zero. Because b to the zero power equals one. Anything to the zero power equals one. Okay? Good thing. Another one, um, talking about things being inverses, it comes up. Let's see if I printed this off. But um, showing you how they cancel each other out would be like if I had something like um <coughs> what up with the equations, so just hold. If you had something like, like under properties, b to the log base b of x, this one. Well, it's still an exponential function. You remember these bases are still the same. The base of this exponential function is the base of this logarithm. It's just not re written as nice as one of these. But basically the same thing. Because they're inverses, they take each other out. They cancel each other out, and your answer is just x, whatever's in that argument position. Because the base, these bases undo each other. Okay? And you don't really see any of these, but in case one comes up in your homework, I want to make sure you're aware of it. So now we're going to talk about solving logarithmic equations. <coughs> Solve log equations. All you have to do is you're going to write the logarithm in exponential form. Once you write the logarithm in exponential form, you will um, rewrite the equation so that the bases are equal. we did on your homework that you did for today in 4.2. The only thing you're doing extra with the log equation is this first one, writing in exponential form, and then this is what we did for your homework for today. You wrote up each equation so that your bases were the same, so that you could set your exponents equal. So this is what we did in 4.2. Now, 
Now, in a logarithm, we can have our unknown in one of three places. Your unknown could be your base, your unknown could be your power, or your unknown could be um, the answer part. We're going to look at one of each type.
there. We've got to rewrite both of these with a base of 3. So it would be 3 squared to the x is equal to 3 cubed. Or 3 to the 2x is equal to 3 cubed. So that means 2x is equal to 3. Divide both sides by 2. So x is equal to 3 halves. Okay there? Number five, put it in exponential form. So that'll be three to the x power is equal to 81. Well, can I rewrite 81 with a base of three? Yes, this would be three to the x is equal to three to the four. So if your bases are equal, then x would have to be equal to four. Now in all of those, the base, your unknown has been the exponent, what it's supposed to equal to. Let's look at when it moves around when right nine is elsewhere. Number six. This one you're you're gonna have log base x of eight over twenty-seven is equal to three. So let's put this in exponential form. This is gonna be x cubed is equal to 8 over 27. Well, what do I need to do to get rid of that 3 as an exponent? Take the cube root of both sides, right? Or you can raise both sides to the one-third power, same thing, raising it to the power of the reciprocal, right? Or you might look. What? You know, try to rewrite this one with the exponent of 3. But I would go ahead, let's take the cube root of both sides. Cube root of x cubed is x. What's the cube root of 8? So what's the cube root of 27? Take the cube root or one third, raising both sides to that reciprocal power like we did a few minutes ago. Let's look at another one like this. Um, next, let's say if I have one, um, give you another one here today. Number seven, let's say we have log base x of 16 is equal to 2. So in exponential form, it would be what? x squared equals 16. What do I need to do to both sides get plain x? Square. Square. Take the square root of both sides. Now, normally your square root property says you would say that was plus or minus 4. But remember earlier I told you that the base and your argument have to always be greater than 0, which means they always have to be positive. So that's why your answer is only the positive 4. The only thing that can ever be negative would be the exponent. So here your answer would just be x equal 4. Let's look at an example of where, this is the easiest one, where's their argument position. Number eight, if I had log base two of x is equal to three. These are going to be the ones you're going to want to see on your test. Because you know this. Put it in exponential form and see what it looks like. When it's in the answer spot, all you got to do is hit the button on your calculator. You got the answer.
What I'm going to show you right now will review for this test, which you'll take on my math lab. Okay, so um, if we're going to expand a logarithm. You have what's called your, um, these are still properties for logs. First, you have your product rule. Let me ask you this. We're going to review you back real quick. If you're multiplying like basis, what do you do with the exponent? Like if you were going to say x squared times x cubed, what's that equal to? X to the fifth. X to the fifth. If you're multiplying like basis, you add the exponent, right? And I just told you earlier, a logarithm is the exponent. So your product rule for a logarithm, since if you have log base b of x times y, if these are being multiplied, and if you want to expand it, you split it up by adding. That's the same thing as log base b of x plus log base b of y. Multiplying exponents, when you multiply because you add them together. And that's what we're doing. We're adding the exponents on those bases. That's your product rule. Your quotient rule, what do you do when you're dividing like bases with exponents? Like if I had x to the fourth divided by x, what do I do with those? You subtract it. So that's going to be our quotient rule for exponents. If you've got log base b of x divided by y, that's the same thing as log base b of x minus log base b of y. Because this whole thing here is equal to the exponents. So when you're, multi when you're dividing like bases, you subtract the exponents. And then you have your power rule. Your power rule for exponents is like when you had x squared cubed. What did you do when the exponent was on the outside of the parentheses? Multiply. That's what we're going to do here. If you have log base b of x to the p power, you're just going to bring that power out front so that you can multiply times that logarithm. So when you're doing this, your powers always come out front. On the quotient rule, anything in the denominator gets subtracted. Everything in the top gets added. Everything in the denominator will be subtracted. So let me show you a quick example. So let's say, for example, if you're told to expand, we'll condense next time. So if you're told to expand the log, if you've got log base 2 of x, y divided by z. Okay, just look what I just said. Anything in the top gets added, everything in the bottom gets subtracted. There's no powers here. So if you want to expand this, this would be log base 2 of x. These are being multiplied, so it's added, plus log base 2 of y minus what you're dividing by. Minus log base 2 of z. Does that blow anybody's mind there? If you can, confusion, pretty easy. Remember, anything in the top gets added, you'll subtract everything that's in the denominator. Let's look at an example with a power. Say if I had log base 3 of x squared y cubed over 2z to the fourth. Everything's got to be written out single. Every little term you have, term or number, okay. is going to have to be split up. You're splitting everything out. You're expanding it. Kind of like when your kids fight. You put everybody in a different room. So that's the answer? That's the answer to the first one, yes. Whatever's in the top gets added, you subtract what's in the bottom. You're going to split everything up with the word log in front of it. So on this one, this would be, I'm going to do this one in two steps. This would be log base 3 of x squared plus log base 3 of y cubed. Now I'm subtract, you subtract anything you're dividing by. So right here I've got to say minus log base 3 of 2 minus log base 3 of z to the 4. Everything in the top gets added. Anything <coughs> you're dividing by gets subtracted. I'm going to do this one in two steps. 
I've just separated the multiplying and the dividing part with my plus and minus, <coughs> the adding and the subtracting. We're good there. Now your power rule says you got to bring all the powers out front. So we'll bring these powers down front. This will be 2 log base 3 of x plus 3 log base 3 of y minus log base 3 of 2 minus 4 log base 3 of z. Then you're done with that problem. That's your answer. Now one thing about that final exam review sheet, hold tight.